The cat. The cat is the answer. Schrodinger's cat. Has anybody here met Schrodinger? That guy. <laughs> He's a cat in a box that is both dead and alive. And that is how you understand a girl's attraction, or more accurately, arousal toward you. Dead and alive. To get a girl attracted to you, you don't want to think of it as attraction, you want to think of it as arousal. <clears throat> and arousal only occurs when there are contrasting emotions, excitement and fear, like and dislike, pleasure and drama, relaxed and energetic, only contrasting. Why do the nice guys not get laid? Nice guys are perfectly eligible. They make enough money, they've got enough status, they share enough, they might be good looking, but because they're nice, they're not arousing, they're not engaging, they're not interesting to the girl. And just so you know, just to recap, a girl's attraction, which is better described as arousal, works as interesting, then uh, viscerally excited, and then turned on. Okay, when you add the physicality, you add some intimacy, it's like an oven, interesting, excited, turned on, and it can also cool down like an oven as well. So when you start talking to a girl off cold approach, you're only gonna be interesting, like a little bit interesting from the cold approach. Even then, her defenses are up to begin with. She's got a wall, she's not interested in meeting you guys because in the same way when you guys walk past McDonald's, uh, Taco Bell, KFC, all those places, would it be nice to eat some bullshit quesadilla? Yep, nice to eat a Big Mac, fuck yeah. Good to eat some Colonel's chicken? Yeah, I love all that shit. Is it good for you? Fuck no. If a girl looks at three guys in this room who believe that there's no reason why they're not enough, okay, or for, for example, myself and Nick, both very experienced in the game, she could both be potentially attracted to either of us, but she's not gonna be openly attracted to either of us to begin with. Only with a small amount of time will that girl's defenses not get smashed down by your good game, but wilt away naturally as she becomes comfortable and familiar with you, okay? That might take four reapproaches or a bit of time spent together. When I approach girls, just the same way you guys approach girls, I get the same reaction, okay? Absolutely the same reaction. They give me this. They turn away from me. Difference is, I know that there's still no reason why I'm not enough and I reapproach again a little bit later. Or speak to a friend or speak to a different friend. That's it. And if one set doesn't work out, I know that it's probably because she has a boyfriend. Who knows? <laughs> doesn't affect me emotionally. I know that it, I can't control that, so I go and meet another girl who's perfectly as attractive but different than that girl that I just met. Okay, another four star, maybe five star girl. Point is, the reason why so many of you guys don't get laid, well the second reason, the first reason is because you don't believe that there's no reason why you're not enough. Watch the natural instinct method video <laughs> online. The second reason is you've got to have a long set. If you don't have a long set, you won't get the girl, okay? The reason why you don't have long sets is because you think the girl doesn't like you. Which brings me back to the cat. Fucking meow. I love cats. Schrodinger's cat, in the quantum physics sense, anyone here is an actual physicist or really expertise with science and physics? Nope. The basic gist of it is this. If you put a cat in a box with a vial, a file, I don't even know how to pronounce that, a little container of a uh, lethally poisonous substance and the cat can easily break that by just knocking it over by accident and you look at the box from the outside is the cat dead or alive the answer is both okay you couldn't definitively say the cat's dead or the cat is alive because you just don't know now if the cat is both that's two contrasting things right if the girl is both, that's two contrasting things, right? So when you talk to the girl and she doesn't know if she likes you or not, that's gonna be infinitely more arousing than if you've polarized her and she knows that she likes you or she definitely doesn't like you. Macho guys with massive muscles, ripped abs, money, muscle cars, drug dealers, a lot of girls don't, like, the majority of girls don't like those guys 
because they're only negative. They only have that range of emotions that they express, okay? Nice guys, range of emotions looks like, nice to meet you, where are you from? Can I buy you a drink? Nice to meet you, Brrr. Macho guy is like, I'm tough, you girl, I've got a nice car, I'm tough, cross my arms, angry face, flat as well, okay? The guys who are the best are the guys who are macho who can be like little kids, okay? The guys who, you know, like, for example, okay, who's about, yeah, eight out of 10 awesome. Guys like, no, of course, is amazing. Guys like, he's big, he's strong, he's fucking ripped. He, I don't think he barely drinks anymore, but he acts like a little girly kid. And girls like that because it's a contrast in emotions. When I talk to a girl from a position of there's no reason why I'm not enough, which is what I want you to all to start to think about at this moment and start to think about it forever during this weekend, during the hot seat and forever into the future. When the girl talks to me, the thing that's the most arousing that makes me have a really long set is that girl is thinking, does he like me or not? And then she's also thinking, do I like him or am I gonna dislike him, okay? If both of those things are going on at the same time, if the cat is both dead and alive, to, to touch on the metaphor again, that's gonna make the set even longer. Now let's bring it back to Mr. Nice Guy buying drinks. I buy drinks. I consider myself a nice guy. When, uh, when I go on Tyra Banks in the future, very arrogant claim to make, if I ever go on a TV show in the future, you know, I buy drinks. You're gonna see it my almost every girl that I pick up and have a one night stand with, I'm like, hi, can I buy you a drink? Okay, I take her to the bar, buy her a drink, do it that way. And it's totally fine. But during that time, I also use negative expressions exactly like drama. And that gives the girl a reason to hate me or to be combative towards me. But at the same time, because I'm a, like a nice guy, I always wear my polo shirt, pretty much. The reason why I always wear this shirt is because this is polo shirt number like 15 or 16. I sometimes rip them off, get them ripped, get like acidic drinks spilled on them, go straight to a polo shop in the airport, buy exactly the same type of shirt, whip it on, good to go, right? So that's why I've always got these same shirts for guys who watch a lot of Alex videos. Um, and I'm just a really calm, really normal guy. And I, when I talk to the girl, I'll use a range of expressions. I'll say things that I love, things that I hate. Uh, and the defenses fade away. She starts to turn her interest into actual excitement. Like, oh my God, here's a guy who's not trying to impress me. He's not trying to impress me. Does he like me or does he not like me? All guys like me. Does this guy like me or not? That is more engaging than being polarizing, okay? That's a pretty big fucking statement to make, but that is how my game is run. And it's one night stands all the time. Nick, is my game good? <laughs> Have you seen better game? Nah, yeah, and you've seen, you've seen a lot of very good guys. Some of those guys in the trip, like, he fucks 70 girls in a year, Swedish gymnasts. But that's because he's in the Swedish gymnastic Olympic team and is a Swedish gymnastics coach. So imagine, I really, this epiphany really hit hard in terms of the phone numbers that you want to get. All right, if you're going out for phone numbers in day game and even night game, when, when I leave a girl, like when I leave the interaction, you've always got to leave the interaction on the outside of the bar, okay? A phone number gained in the bar is about one hundredth the power of the phone number that you get inside of the bar. Okay, sorry, let me say that again. Phone numbers on the outside of the bar are infinitely better than phone numbers on the inside of the bar. So, so much better. When the girl goes to take a phone call from me, the number is really, really solid. If the girl's reaction to my phone call on my phone and text or Facebook or email interaction is, if the girl thinks, where is this gonna go? That is the best way to get the girl face to face again. Where is this gonna go? Does he like me or not? He's got abundance, but he's not making moves, but he could. I love the look on your face right now. It's like, it's literally like so furrowed. If there's any questions later or if you're just tired, we'll get to that in a second. Same thing, Turkey. Turkey, Korean time zone, of course. Um, that's the thing, when I used to go up to girls, I could go up around the club, hit on 30 of them. Smooth, direct, good game skills. One in 30 would want to fuck, sure. But what I'd usually find is the girls who are down to fuck straight away are not the girls that I want. The tall, elegant, beautiful, graceful, 
educated, high heels, fashionable, the stunners. And there's your Nick shaking his head at the back there. Like the, <laughs> like it's retarded. You've seen it. Even I'm like, what is going on here? Good old psychology for the win again. One of the last girls was this Bulgarian girl, like this tall on me, uh, just an absolute supermodel, stunning. She's in the, one of the videos that I'm gonna put out. She's on my Facebook. On that Facebook, you can see her on there briefly. Um, and that's how you get these girls because that girl, what really, really turns them on, what engages them for longer. And the most critical part about turning the first part of the interaction to the second part of the interaction to bridge the pick up to the phone number to the date is the girl looking at her phone thinking, I wonder what's gonna happen with this. That's the most exciting thing for her. Is this gonna go further? Is he gonna make a move? Am I, am I interested? Am I not interested? This is an unanswered question. Is the cat dead or alive? If the cat's dead, end of equation, who cares? If the cat's alive, well, good for the cat. Take him out, he's safe, end of equation. If the cat's dead or alive, you don't know. It stays engaging, okay? All girls like arousal, like engagement, like anticipation, like excitement. And this way, what I do, I'll go around to a club, there might be five five-star girls. Let me call them five-star girls. Because they're, they're hot enough that if you had sex with them, you'd want to show your friends. Okay, that's the nominal thing. And that way, it's, it's a very subjective thing. Like if she's like really, really beautiful, but has a flat chest, well, she's got a beautiful face, that's okay, right? Um, if she's extremely graceful and exotic looking, that can be five stars as well. It's all the brag factor, okay? By the way, for the record, a three-star girl is one who you wouldn't want your friends to find out about. Four stars, like, I did it. I don't care if anybody finds out, but I wouldn't go out of my way to brag about it. Five stars it does require a little bit of like, hey, mates in the secret Facebook group, check this out. This is something else, all right? And... Uh, the thing is with those different tiers of girls, uh, there's different psychology that applies to those three tiers of girls. And with the five star girls, they have no desperation. They have full abundance. Four star girls, they can be a little bit desperate. They can be like, am I, am I hot? Like, I want guys' attention. I dress like hotter than I really am. Whereas the, four, the five star girls, the really graceful, really popular girls, who rarely, if ever, have a guy just to be cool and give her that excitement of not knowing if he likes her or not, that's when they really just go, they, they don't show indications of interest, they just kind of like chat to you and hang out. I hooked up with a girl the other week in Boston, 26 years old, dentist, be like beautiful body, <laughs> you saw the photo today, another just show you mate sort of girl, stunning blonde hair, uh, the rack, petite little thing, tightest ass, and she didn't give me any indications of interest whatsoever. She just kind of looked at me and nodded her head. Then, then she found out about me and online. I thought that I blocked my Facebook name from being my, uh, my connection shit online, but it came back from the dead. No, actually, no, uh, she, she, uh, during the pickup, she barely gave me any like, oh my God, no enthusiasm. But she complied with me when I said, do you wanna get a drink? Sure. Uh, when, I took her, when I put her hand on my arm, no big deal. Apathy, indifference, where is this going? I'm talking to her and other girls around me. The ancient skill of merging sets to keep your abundance, to keep your uh, screening, working the entire bar while you're with a solid thing. You gotta be able to do that. The good thing is when you're not going in polarizing, then you can have a bit of a chat with everyone and figure out with clever screening and boyfriend screening who's single and who would be the most likely and the most hottest to fuck. Problem is, I used to go around in the early days when I was a coach and make out with like eight or nine girls in a bar. Like easy. I mean, I'm in like Calgary. I just started executive coaching. I have like these magic like keno moves to get makeouts really quick. But then it's like the Mr. Burns disease door frame paradigm. You guys have seen this in The Simpsons? It's like, Mr. Burns, you actually have every disease. It's like, really? I'm pregnant? <laughs> I have <laughs> breast cancer? He's like, yeah, a little bit. It's like, because you have so many diseases, none of them can actually act. Because you have so many girls, you can't actually get any of them because they all think that you're a fucking player. So I never want to be thought of as the player. 
So that's when I'm like, I can take it or leave it. Does he like me or not? And, and when the girl thinks, am I attractive to this guy or not? When the girl's obviously attractive, it's like you're a gay friend. Honestly, I, I'm not a gay friend because I express a lot of negativity. I put my arm around the girl. I get her to give me a head scratch. Um, I occasionally do things like physical expressions and I like dance with her, spin her, but that's not my game. It's not like, do you like me or not? It's like, this is unfolding. And the more that it unfolds, the more it gives her the chance for her defenses to lower, her arousal to go from stimulation to excitement to turn on. And the slower that oven warms up, the longer it stays warm and the slower it is to cool down. When you go up and like grab a girl and dip her and do the crazy things, it's just she gets warm really fast and then cool really fast. Like a microwave, maybe. I don't know. I don't know shit about cooking. <laughs> Mixing metaphors here. Um, and I found I got a lot of flakes that way. This way, the silver lining, okay, with this method, with good screening, that's another video another day, which I'll talk about in depth at another time. With this method, even if I'm not getting laid, which is what's happening to most of you, okay, and me before I knew anything about this, if I'm not getting laid, at least I'm not getting laid with a stunning girl who I really, really like, okay? I'm spending the entire time, the entire night, with a girl who's just beautiful, graceful, usually more educated than most, cool, down to earth. Sure, she'll give me tests. Sure, she'll say, you're just trying to have sex with me. You're just trying to pick me up. But the tests are more clever and down to earth. And it's all a very calm, genuinely relaxing situation, as opposed to the more desperate, lower value girls who are not as hot, who who give you those more intense, stupid, we're lesbians, buy me, buy me a drink, retarded tests like that, which I don't like, okay? <laughs> those, those tests, those old tests, they're a fucking problem. And if girls give you those tests, we're lesbians, you say, give me a different test. I heard you already used that one. Give me another one. We're allowed to use that one. Like, no, you're not. I've hereby forbidden it. Try again. <laughs> and they're like, it just destroys their game. They can't handle it when you call them out on their tests. Um, so... Therefore, how do you do <laughs> Schrodinger's cat game, okay? The truth is, this is what I believe to be the truth. Do I have any proof? I have some pretty fucking amazing relationships with really attractive girls that supports evidence to this, like Olympians and doctors and Miss Teen supermodel winners, relationships with girls like that, <laughs> the Australian Olympic team. Um, because you're such a high value guy and you can approach and have conversations and be comfortable interacting with any girl physically, the girl you like the most is, is certainly gonna be a variation of hot, but the girl who you really like the most is the one who you feel like you'd look after the most, okay? That's what it is to be a man, to be influential and to have that kind of downwards nurturing, looking after connection. And so the one that I like the most is the one who kind of gets with my program, who comes into my reality as like the man in her life sort of frame. So the thing is, even though I'm talking to this really, really hot girl, if she doesn't want to get with the fucking program, well, fair enough. I've got big plans. I want a girl to come with me. Who's it going to be? We could have a lot of fun together. I know you like nice dinners, not working, relaxing and lying in hotel beds all day. That's my vision that I want to do. You don't want to do it? That sucks. I really wanted it to be you, but... I can start a conversation with that girl and get the nurturing man in your life frame, warming up process happening with the next one, okay? And so that way, that's how you can have that I am enough attitude and the girl thinks, holy shit, he is enough. He has no neediness towards me. Does he want me or not? Does he actually need me or not? Am I attractive here or not? And that's what's gonna really make her enjoy that whole sex in the city paradigm or frame for a longer period of time and convert the date. This also mean things like, means things like not making out during nighttime pickup. Do that for learning and growing, but sometimes I won't do that. Now I do it quite a lot because I know that it's a sure thing and I still have the frame, like I really have a frame when I kiss the girl that I'm just trying this on for size. Honestly, that's my frame when I kiss a girl, a stunning girl in the club. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give in and give you a little kiss. That's how I believe, because I know that I know that it could be any other really attractive, cool single girl in the bar. Okay, any of five to ten who are eligible, single, available, 
okay, in the club, all right? That old, that problem, you know, you don't want that problem. So, that's what it is. So when you go to the bar, realize that you could talk to and hold a conversation with anyone. Find a group of girls, find the hot one, let the interaction develop on its own terms, spend some time together while you're with that girl. Obviously, you're gonna have to go to the bathroom and come back, re-approach, go to the bar, come back, talk to your friends and come back. Keep interacting in a friendly, with physical rapport way with a lot of girls. And that girl is gonna see you got physical abundance, you're not a pickup guy, you're not polarizing people, you're not, you can never be called like sleazy or a player because you're so intense with everyone. And then she's gonna start to think, is this on or not? And I never want you guys to think ever again, does she like me or not? That's not how girls work. Never walk away from the set because the girl is not into you. She doesn't want to be into you. She wants the arousal. She wants to be engaged in you for a longer period of time. And that's why they play the game. That's why they test you. That's why girls in this world never say, hmm, you have attractive traits. Let's go and fuck. Oh, wait, wait. They do that in the main character for the movie, the uh, Project X. Oh, yeah, but that's Hollywood. Like, what, what the fuck were you thinking, right? It doesn't happen that way unless you are like the host of a party or a DJ. But we're talking cold approach pickup here, okay? That's why girls are never easy. They want it to be arousing and engaging for even longer. Moral of the story, trust the cat. Don't walk away from set so fucking easily. Girls are not gonna show you that they like you. They're gonna do a combination of both. And you should feel a combination of both. Like this relationship has potential, let's work on it. But I could also wa walk away and develop another relationship somewhere else. So how do you reconcile, you know, keeping that ambiguity with, with demonstrating some intent? I don't. I don't really demonstrate intent. Great question. Intent. Intent. How do I reconcile ambiguity with showing intent? I don't ever show intent towards the girl. I show that I've got potential interest in the girl, which you might translate as intent. Once in a while, I do something called a physical expression. I wrote an article, uh, I wrote an article about this called uh, physical rapport. And basically with these girls, I'm coming at it from a man in their life kind of frame, just chilling out, hanging out in a bar. Once in a while, I'll be like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. Spin her and dip her and then put her back. Just because I know that I can, okay? So what are you guys doing tonight? Just like that. So I'll show that I can be intentful or use intent but I like to draw out the interaction even longer, which makes it more of a sure thing that she'll walk out of the bar with me, date me later, and wonder if she likes me or not. I can do it and I express it intermittently, but if I do intent, 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 the girl's gonna think, he likes me, he likes me, he likes me. And from cold approach, it's hard to really engage and hook a girl without kind of validating that she knows what's gonna happen. Whereas if I was truly like a high status DJ, or a famous football player, or like an a, a American football player and I showed intent to a girl, she would need that to trust that I even liked her or have any value for her. Um, but from cold approach, I'm just kind of drawing it out. I'm a kind of an unknown entity in her mind. Does that make sense? I, I guess, I'm just wondering, at some point you're going to have to move. In the bedroom. Yeah. And you can actually really see it. You can see it like, the, the girl starts to get very self-aware and self-conscious. She mirrors the kind of behaviors that you would have had when you were 12 or 13, when you don't quite know what to do with yourself. The girl does it, her hands kind of shake, her pupils dilate, and her eyes become a little bit like attentive like this, okay? As opposed to being like relaxed and indifferent and I hate this club to, you can see the cogs start to turn a little bit. And this is like fine nuances of social psychology and body language that you can begin to get a sense of, how do you know when to move things forward? It's not really a moving things forward. It's like, oh yeah, cool, this is closing. Let me uh, be the one to walk you out. That's how I say it. So we're gonna have to leave anyway, so I might as well be the one to walk her out. That way she can never be defensive, which creates a whole world of problems. You guys know when the girls are defensive, like, I'm going with my friends, I'm da -da 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 -da. I hate that, I wanna avoid that at all costs, because what I really want is the girl to be relaxed with me. And then later on, you know, when it comes to the, seeing the, getting into a place or going on a date, I just insist four times, sometimes more. I'm like, no, no, I must. We need to explore this further. We need to explore this further. This is unfulfilled territory. <laughs> we need to find out what's gonna happen next. And I play it that way, as opposed to I wanna see you, or I want you, or I hate you, don't see me. 
that kind of stuff, keeping it open with more potential. So I show intent sometimes, but otherwise I let it kind of brew inside of her because attraction is a function of time, right? The more time that she has with me, the more she gets turned on, especially when I've got the frame of there's no reason why I'm not enough. And then I can see that she'd much prefer to orbit back to me than anybody else in the bar because I'm the one with the options. I'm not sleazy, I'm not needy, I'm not desperate, and I'm still having a lot of fun and being cool validating and both disvalidating a lot of people at the same time because I've got options and I'm a high value guy. Now does this wrap your head around it? Cool. Yeah, Tom. So say you're, uh, you're out and then you're chatting with a girl and then she's like leaving, uh, leaving the bar. Like how do you do things? Like it seems like the girl doesn't know she's gonna fuck you whenever, she, whenever you get like together one on one with her. Is that kind of how it is? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I like the girl to come to the date. Like the girl uh, from Boston, for example, she came to the date looking stunning. And we have footage of this as well, okay? Thorough. You know, like, it was, I was in the hot seat with this girl, like, teaching the audience, and I was getting the texts, you know, as it was happening. So we went through all the texts, went on the date, got footage of the date. It's great. So I want the girl coming to the date, dressing with her nice underwear on, with her boobs, like, you know, pushed up, her hair done immaculately. So she feels like she has the choice that she can like take it or leave it when really I know that she could be totally crazy and not fuck me and be totally crazy and just want to fuck me right there on the date. I have no idea. So I'm just going to have a good time on the date, watch whatever movie I wanted to watch, have whatever cocktails I wanted to drink. I, I like taking photos on dates, do whatever photography that I wanted to do, have a chat, get to know her, have a great time talking about how cool I am and then she's going to be like, hold on, I still don't know. Then it builds up, we have a few drinks, and then I, what I do uh, in a logistical sense on a date, which is pretty like natural anyway, I show girls my photos, then I say, well, why don't you show me your photos back at your place? And she's like, okay. And then, then she like kind of wins me. And once, once the girl gets me, then there's no more game. It's like, oh, we get along really well. And since that time, I've still been texting that girl like 10, 15 times a day, I'm gonna go see her again. So it'd be good. Yeah. And she's probably going to see this video and just fucking flip. Um, well, it's for science and uh, it's for love and for science. Acknowledgement. That's the big fucking capital letter word. Acknowledge how awesome you are. My goal here is to alleviate pressure from yourself so you're not holding yourself accountable to misguided ideas. If you never knew about the pickup industry, you would never have a standard by which to stifle yourself from. So he's not a good fucking standard to measure yourself from.